Hey everyone, this is Shithij, your meetings manager, and today I'm going over the first 20 questions from the Clemens competition of the multiple choice. So, I'm just going to jump right into it. Let's take a look at number one. So usually these are some kind of number system problem, and they give you answers, uh, questions and answers in binary, decimal, hexadecimal, and sometimes even uh, different base systems, number systems. So the first step is usually just to perform the operation here. And we can do that just 324 plus, what was it, 72, which gives us 396. And then 396, you want to try to see what answer choices would make sense for 396. So first off, there's two answer, answer choices which makes zero sense to put. B and D, because they have a number that looks a lot like binary with a base 10, meaning that this actually represents more than, what, 10 million. In that case, obviously, 324 plus 72 does not equal 10 million, so we know that B and D have to be wrong. I would prefer to evaluate this first, just because it makes more sense to me than hexadecimal, evaluating the hexadecimal first, so I would, I'll do that. So the way you check, you first the way you evaluate a binary number and see if it's a see if it's equivalent value in decimal, is simply write the number zero zero one one zero, and then each digit is two to the power of something. So two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, two to the power of three, two to the power of four, five, two to the power of six, and two to the power of seven. Like in De decimal, it's the same concept, except all of these twos are tens. You simply have to multiply each of these twos by its corresponding digit, and then add the add the final digits. So if it's a zero, you don't have to add anything, and you could just ignore all of the zeros for now. And then you sim you add two to the power of one plus two to the power of two, plus two to the power of six plus two to the power of seven. So that's uh, two fifty six plus 128 plus 4 plus 2. And that, if you add it all up, gives you 396, and therefore, C is our correct answer. Next, this problem is a problem that's kind of just something you have to be able to trace. Uh, and it's really, really easy to trace this because it's just PEMDAS. So starting off, with PEMDAS, it just follows the same thing as you would in normal math. Y times Z would be first, so 1 times 5, which is 5, and then 4 minus, and then you just follow, because everything else is just subtraction, 4 minus 5 minus 4. So 4 minus 5 is negative 1, minus 4 is negative 5, so the answer is D. Question 3. So these backslashes are what's know what are known as escape sequences. So I'm actually going to type this one out and just to show you what it looks what it would look like to an IDE. Uh, string k is equal to backslash let's see. backslash backslash n All right, sorry about that. So, and then th what they're doing is printing it out later. So what these colors uh, mean is that they're showing what's actually part of the string. So N is actually part of the string. And this here is an escape sequence. So the escape sequences are little uh, characters you can add after a backslash that would indicate something uh, different based on the character. So, for example, for N, it means a new line. For a backslash T, it means a tab. But what if you just wanted to print just a backslash? Well, in that case, you would have two backslashes right next to each other, and then one back, and then you would be able to print the backslash means that this backslash doesn't actually correspond to a new line with this n. It just means that 
this backslash is being printed out because of the one prior to it. In that case, you can see the ones that are blue, the ends that are blue, are indicative of a new line. So that means that there's a new line here and a new line here. If you run this program, that's what it looks like, because there's a new line here and here towards the end. But the answer isn't two, because there are more there are more than just two new lines being printed. Why? Because of this right here. Print ln means print line, so it'll automatically add a backslash n to the end and print a new line. Therefore, the answer is 3. Question 4. So the way that the substring, substrings work is that substrings are inclusive of the first number and exclusive of the second number. So, in this one, it would merely be... I think that's what it says. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this one is a substring from 2 and 6. So you're taking a portion of this string, no man's land, from the index of 2 to the index of 6. So going back here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Starting at 2. We're going to start at 2. We're going to ignore everything else before it and then go up till 6, but we don't go through 6, because substring is exclusive of the second term. So we only go with mans, and ignore everything else. And therefore, our x is equal to mans, and the answer is c. Question 5. So th for this, you can use what's known as short-circuiting. So do you know for a fact that the OR in between, for the output to be false, both the left term and the right term have to be false? What's something that both the left term and the right term have in common? They share an A. Therefore, A has to be false for bo both sides of the OR to be false, because both sides include an AND. So when A is false, we know for a fact that the conditional will evaluate to false, and the output will be false. Question 6. Math.random uh, returns a random double between 0 and 1, with 0 being inclusive and 1 being exclusive. So we know that and be, the, you're converting this to an integer. Ints always truncate. Even if you had a value that was like 39.999, and this was a double, if you converted this to an int, which you would do by casting, which is being done right here, then this would not go to 40. This would become 39. It simply ignores the decimal. With that same thing in mind, oops, here, math.random will never evaluate to 1, which means that this 28, this first multiplication, will be at most 27.99 something, right? And that minus 37, so 27.99 minus 37, that equals negative 9.01, which will truncate to negative 9. That means that d, negative 8, will never be reached because the maximum that 28 can be is or that the maximum that the random can evaluate to is not 1 but as close to 1 as possible but it can reach 0 so 36 and 37 would both be okay therefore d is the correct answer question 7 so for this problem it's a good idea to just trace through all the variables and write them down as you go so 26 mod 3, well the remainder, 26 and divided by 3, the remainder would be 2, so b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 8. And then you can apply PEMDAS again. So first the division, so a divided by 2, which is 13, 13 times 3, which is uh, 39, plus b, which is 2, minus c, which is 8. So essentially that is 39 plus, minus 6, because 8, 
be in 2. And therefore, 39 minus 6 is E, 33. So the correct answer is 33. Check my recording. All right. Moving on. Question 8. Uh, this is another problem that it's a good idea to trace. There's a lot of problems like this on uh, these contests, so getting good at that is a valuable skill to develop. So first off, k is equal to 42, and the way these con conditionals work, if k is greater than 0, which we know it is for a fact, then we add 10 to k. And we don't run this else if statement, we just ignore it. Then if k is less than 100, because this is a part of another uh, conditional, which it is, then you subtract 60. So it's 52 minus 60, negative 8. And then if k is greater than or equal to 20, uh, which, is, which we know it isn't, then we don't run it. So the answer is negative 8, and the answer is b. Question 9. So this question is really interesting, and I'm going to go to my IDE for it, because it's about the difference between k++ here versus plus plus k, pre-incrementing uh, and post-incrementing. So the difference here, I'll show you the difference right now. If we just do k++, the output of this program is 25, 27, 29, and 31. If, however, we do plus plus k, the output of this program is 26, 28, 30, and 32. Hmm. Why is that? Well, what's happening here is, if we go here, k is 24 here, and then when it gets to this line, it is, it's still 24 when evaluating this conditional, but after this conditional is checked, it becomes 25. And then, when this print statement is run, it adds 20, plus 1 to 25, and it becomes 26, and then it prints out 26. However, if this were, were not the case, if we instead did plus plus k, which is what we did end up doing. As you can see, it's clearly the, uh, different here. If that's what we end up, end up doing, then it's not the same thing, because here it runs the print statement first, and then it increments the value. So it's still getting incremented either way, it's still plus one is getting added to it in both this situation and this situation. However, it's being done at different times based on the print statement and the while, the while conditional. And therefore, the answer to this question is B. Let me check that. Yep, B. Question 10. Now, this is a really, really easy question. So we know that we start counting on the list uh, from 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, zero, list 0 is A, list 3 is D, so the answer is just D, A, D. Question 11. So this has to do with scanners, and I'm sure all of you use scanners in your competitive programming endeavors in the programming portion, but here we're not doing system.in, we're doing inputting a string into the scanner. It's kind of the same thing, You don't. it's not too difficult to understand. You check if the scanner has a next int. So here, I'm going to go back to paint. All right. So the scanner here on 46, first it evaluates 46. It That ha is an integer. So the scanner has another int uh, after it. It starts off here and has another int. So then it adds the next int, it takes 46, and then it takes 46, and then it throws it out of the scanner. The scanner moves on from 46 to 2, and it adds uh, 46 to count. So count is now equal to 46. Then 2 is another integer, so the scanner has another int uh, upcoming. 
So then it adds 2 to 46. So count then becomes 48. And then the scanner moves its point from being over here at 2 to being at 8. That's an integer, so this conditional is still true. And then count adds count because it takes the next integer, and count becomes 56. Finally, 12 and 20, uh, finally it comes to through. Now that is not an integer. What does that mean? Well, it means that this while conditional evaluates to false. So we don't run any of this code, and we simply print out count. Here, count was 56, so the answer is A, 56. Question 13. Now, this is kind of something that it's just a good idea to have down and memorized. And if you go to the great UIL study guide, uh, which I think David has sent in announcements before, you can take a look at the Java order of precedence on page 6. This is the order of precedence in Java. Array elements are always first in precedence, so E is the correct answer for question 13. Question 14, uh, another one that you kind of just have to have down to memory. The amount of bits in a byte is 8. So the answer is D. Question 15. Now, this question would make sense except for one key thing that causes an error in this code. And I can show you that right now. Here. So if I just run the code now as is, you get an exception at the end. And clearly, there's an out of bounds exception, index out of bounds. That means that the answer is E. There is no output due to an out of bounds exception. However, how did we get there? Well. Imagine for a second if this i here was a 1. What would happen then? Then the answer would be D, coin A have i. Because what is happening in this line is that you're taking the last index, or you're removing the thing from the last index, the value of the last index, and you're adding it at the beginning. So you're essentially just reversing the list. However, when you add i here, that messes up, and lit, uh, the, for the first one, i is equal to 0. 0 minus uh, list size minus 0 would be 5, or it would be 4, and there's no index at 4, because you start counting at 0 in computer science. Therefore, the answer is e, because specifically of this i, list size minus i. Question 6. So what this operator here is called is a bitwise operator. That means that it involves binary. And I'll show you how in just one second. So 61 in binary, what would that be? Try, try to figure that out for a second, well, with yourself for a second. Uh, pause the video, come back in a second when you got it. OK, so 61 in binary would be you would evaluate that by, well, it has, it's odd, so you know that the that one has to be 1. And you know the, the largest value that up appears in the 2 to the powers is 30, uh, 32. So 32 here, and then if 32 is true, if to get to 61, 60, uh, 16 also has to be true. And uh, so that, that evaluates to 48 total, right? Because you, you're supposed to add the digits. And if 16 is uh, present, then 32 plus 16 is 48. So you need, what, 13 more. So you can add an 8. And then now you need uh, 5 more. You can add a 4. Uh, and now you need, now you can skip the 2 and add a 1. And now all of this will add up to 61. So 48, 56, 
uh, 60 and plus 1 is 61. Now I know there's other ways to do it, I just like to do it this way. Uh, it can be confusing, but it's really just using logic here. So that's one way to solve it, and that's the way I, I personally do it. Now we have to evaluate, 57 is in binary. We did 61, now let's do 57. So what's the difference between 61 and 57? It's just four numbers. So if you go back here, remember this was 36. Right, legibly 36, uh, 32, sorry, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Well, if there's just a difference of 4 between these two, then we can just have all of the same stuff and not add a 4 here, right? Now it comes to the bitwise. This is just converting them to binary, but the problem is asking what 61 and 57 is. So the way bitwise works is that you check, because it's because right now we're checking your and. And what do you know about and in a conditional? Both sides of the conditional have to be true for the conditional to evaluate to true if it was and and. I cannot, <laughs> can't draw an and. There we go. But in bitwise, what actually has to be true is that both digits have to be if, uh, equivalent to one. So here, one and one is one, 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 one here, so one, one, zero, so this is uh, not matching, so this one has to be zero. Zero, zero, so this has to be zero, and then one and one, so it has to be one. Then this, in base 10, is equivalent to 57. Therefore, our answer is D, 57. All right. Question 17. Um, what you can do for this question is just to plug in the va uh, values, right? It's not that difficult. Uh, just plug in, the, for example, false and false. A and B, uh, you want to get an output of false. So if A is false here, then the not makes it true. And since this is an or, it doesn't matter what C is, even though C is true here. Uh, this side is true, so you know that the entire conditional has to be true. Now, you can go through this entire thing and conclude, conclude that for all of these options, A, B just went through that one, for B, if it's A is true and B is true and C is true, uh, well, there's a not over here. So A and B being true. Sorry, I'll switch to the top for a second. C being true would not work, and this is not an option for uh, answer C. A is true, B is false, which means that this condition is false, and then it evaluates back true. So we know that that's not going to work. It's going to evaluate the true in the end. Uh, answer is D. A is false, B is true, which means that this conditional is true because A and B is uh, because of the not over here. So we know D is not going to work. A is true and B is true. Whoa, that's a good sign. So this would be this part of the conditional would be false. A uh, A is true here, but because of the not, A becomes false and C is false. So we know that this conditional, this part of the conditional is false. So we know that this entire conditional would evaluate to false. So our answer is E. Make sense? All right. Question 18. Now, question 18, uh, I, I had some trouble with, personally. Uh, but it's, it's really not that bad. Here, so... You first thing to remember is that chars are always also integers. They because of the ASCII chart. So the capital A in ASCII, uh, oops, capital A has a value of 65, capital B has a value of 66, C 67, and so on. That's just something that you have to remember based on the ASCII chart. But you can remember what any letter is, just if you remember that capital A is 65. So going back here, 
So the string is A C B A C A D, and if I were to run this, well, you can guess what happens? There's an error, and that's because let's do the first one just as an example. A minus A. We know that A, uh, the index at or uh, the value at index zero is A, so X becomes equal to A. And a minus a is 0. So the list at index 0 gets added uh, a value of a. And I can show you that. If I move this print statement back, back inside here, and I run the program now, it prints an a first. However, that's not the problem is asking. Because when you move on to c, when char at of 1, i is equal to 1, at c, that's c minus a. Now, what did I say C was? C was 67. So 67 minus 65, so that's equal to 2. But list is an array list of that is just of size 1. So, right, because right now all that list has inside of it is A, as I just showed you. So there's nothing at index 0, there is, or index 2, there is no index 2. Therefore, you can't add something at index 2 here, and therefore, there's an index out of bounds exception. So, the answer to question 18 is E, index out of bounds exception. Now, question 19, uh, I can type up really quickly because I think it'll be better to show you the, how all of these different moduluses work. 4 into, uh, is equal to 500. i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus equals 4. And then system.out.print something, one of these, plus a space. So just do that real quickly. Oops. I'm just going to leave a, some, uh, leave a 4 in here for now. And. That's the wrong language, All right? Now, if I run this, you can probably guess what's going to happen. We're simply printing out i mod 4, and i is always going to be divisible by 4, right? So it'll always be 0 because you're counting down by 4 here. Now you can try to use the same logic to the other options. So starting with i div uh, modulus 8. Now, obviously, 8 is 4 times 2. So what do you expect uh, I to be, uh, this to a value to every time? Well, because 8 is 4 times 2, it would make sense that only half of the numbers are uh, divide, divisible by 8 evenly, right? Because you're counting down by 4 here. So the remainders are 4, 0, 4, 0 alternating. Now, so we know that E is wrong, A is wrong. Let's take a look at D. The numbers are uh, starting off with 500. Well, we know that we know for a fact that 500 mod 5 should equal to 0, right? But if you look here, the sample desired output is 3. And that doesn't make any sense. So here is 0. The sample desired output is 3. We know that that doesn't make any sense, so that has to be wrong. Now it's between B and C. What we can test for this is you can actually just test the first uh, first few conditions. Right? You, we, you know that for a number to be divisible by 9, it also has to be divisible by 3. You can look for the first number that's divisible by 3, and if it's the number that occurs here, then you know that it has to be 9. However, that since that's not the case, the correct answer is C. Finally, we have question 20. Question 20 starts off with 1, and it, the conditional it poses is k is not equal to 50. Now here's the question. Is k ever equal to 50? You're adding 6 here every time, so it doesn't make sense for k to ever be equal to 50 because it simply goes 1, 7, 13, and so on. It never becomes 50. 
Therefore, the answer has to be an infinite loop, and that's exactly what it is. Question 20 is that there is an infinite loop, and the answer is E. So that was the first part of a two-part series going over the entire Clements MC test. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, make sure to let us know in the Discord, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.